This video is brought to you by Core Essentials, home of the ultimate CCW belt. From tactical to leather style gun belts that are second to none, visit coreessentials.com. The XM4, ah yes, the precursor to the M4, a carry handle M4. Now this has elements that was not on the 1983 US Marine Corps XM4. The XM4 actually had thicker handguards and the barrel cut was a little bit different. Right here, this section was actually skinny. That said, I think this rifle is sufficiently lays out sort of some of the baseline of the XM4. The 14 and a half inch barrel and the carbine length gas system, class full stock. These are elements that laid down the blueprint for the current issue US military rifle, the M4. How did we arrive here? It wasn't by luck. And of course, we'll delve into a lot of this. And so the shooting portion is fun to watch, but I invite you to stick around for the discussion because during the discussion, we talk about how. How did SOCOM and Delta instill a lot of those blood, sweat, and tears? into turning out this excellent weapon system or this excellent blueprint for the next generation weapon system that we've come to know and love. And of course, rifles like the proper Gordon Carbine with a 14 and a half inch barrel, that has a crucial role to play into this. And so we'll see you guys at the debrief. Don't forget to leave a comment down below on what you think your experiences with the M4. Without further ado, we'll get right into it. A shout out to our forefathers, and that would be Larry Vickers. 150. Yeah, buddy. Nice. 200. Up at the head. Nice, dead center. Thank you for the reminder. 250. Dead center. Nice. Three hundred. Impact. Impact. Starting to see it shift left just slightly. Okay. It's that slight breeze that's down there just lingering and hanging out. Yep. All right, 350. You see our friends down there? Oh, they're making it, they're making their way closer. Okay, sh there's a shift to the left, you said, right? Slight shift left, yes. Why did you shoot the gong? I thought that was, oh, I'm sorry. Alert. Why did you shoot the gong? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, well, uh, the combat sight works. It 350. Did. You hit it. 350. Okay, 350. Just over his right shoulder. That's an impact. Yep. So, yes, the combat sight works, Josh. <laughs> you were just testing the combat sight. Hey, that's exactly what I was doing. It was in frame for the for the impact, so. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, 400. Uh, dead on. Yeah, dude, nice. Whew. 
Okay. I'm bumping this up to the 400 meter position. And as we're looking at the 450 yards, I will aim lower at the belt line. Just off the right edge, just off the right, maybe two inches right of the target. Same spot. Same spot, elevation's perfect. Two inches right. think that that was too far. I think that went off the left. Impact. Off the right. Couple inches, three, four inches right. That's it. All right, so that was a belt buckle hold. The next one I'm gonna hold dead center. All right, let's see it at five. Impact. Just sailed that one. Okay, 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 got it, got it. Uh, those two shots I said you sailed it, they were too short, too short. The first one skipped up over him, and the second one I saw the, the impact short. Okay. Good windage. That's it. Nice. The XM4, my friend. Woo, baby. The M16A2 carbine. I mean, I've got to say, there's a little bit, I mean, obviously there's nostalgia to this type of stuff. Fixed carry handle, and what would later become the M4 features. I mean, it's just lightweight, easy to shoot, easy to run, great trigger. I mean, this is granted a military trigger, but compared to some of the other Dude, stuff. Dude, this we, just tells me we need to shoot the M4A1 again. We need to. We, we need have to. to shoot it again. I mean, we have a Block 1 on hand as well, but... If we're specifically talking about the XM4, the AR-15A2 carbine, there's no doubt in my mind how this became the new standard. How this ultimately became what is ubiquitously uh, tied to the US military in general. And again, you know, this is one of those stories, those SOCOM stories, the, the, um, the you know, Delta into Special Forces, and pulling the special operations equipment to general issue. This is one of those success stories that came from that uh, that whole lineage. And it's this, I mean, compared to years ago, we shot the M4 with iron sights and that did not go very well. Partially looking back at that, we were jamming like what, eight rifles a day? Yeah, like we were rushing it as part of it. Yeah, yeah. But at the same time, we also sort of wrote it off as like, no, it's a, it's a 14 and a half inch, 55 grain ball, you know, ammo with backup iron sights. Like, mm -hmm. It's not going to be great. And so we sort of, uh, I think we probably, it, it ticked the boxes in our mind that we thought was acceptable for what it was. Right. And it, it maybe even was acceptable for what it was, but we know that we can do, I, I know we can yeah, do better. Yeah, for it. sure. But now, especially like, now. Here's one thing audience at home i've been holding this rifle this entire time usually i do this after i'm shooting it i've been holding this entire time yeah super lightweight fairly well balanced easy to shoot i mean and and look even on a nice calm day with minimal wind the range still tried to screw us with a wind shift at 450 and yeah. 5. i'm sorry i think that that was why you had a couple misses at 450 honestly really well, because I didn't see it until 5, I could start to see it more obviously. Mm -hmm. But at 4.50, you started missing off the right. Ah. And it was a right-to-left win that we were dealing with before going out. Yeah. Still, I mean, so 55 grains, 55 grain, M you know, no, no, uh, M193 spec ammunition, out of a 14 5-inch barrel with iron sights, super lightweight, basically the peak of a 90s fighting rifle that you could get. There's a lot to talk about on this. Do you have anything to add? I want to talk about this a lot. Let's take it yeah. to the debrief and go through it. We'll see you there. Nice fucking Shit, dude, this thing is like, look at the gas. Well, hello there. You must have caught us at the Battalion Field Headquarters 
as we were about to break for lunch. Now we're trying to not have the MREs. I hear the boys in the field are quite fond of them. I hope you're enjoying the show thus far. Shows like this, they're brought to you by Slate Black Industries. But more importantly, we have the support from the patrons of Patreon and Utreon. Now that's true. This group of men and women, they support us intellectually, financially, but most importantly, emotionally. So today, I'd like to invite you, come, join us, become one of us. Together, we could plan to conquer the world of firearms technology. But if you cannot, that's all right. We completely understand. We'd be just as happy to hear from you in the comments section below. Well, without further ado, we'll leave you back to it. Welcome back into the debrief for the XM4 727M16 A2 carbine thing that Henry is going to tell you a lot more about in this debrief. But Henry, more than anything, straight away, I do want to reference how important it was, I think, for us to shoot an iron sighted M4, not M4 style rifle and actually put up a respectable run after the original sort of season one m4 a1 iron sights video where well we kind of sucked <laughs> yeah i mean partially it's because we didn't we we didn't really it's not the same as now we have better spotting equipment we've got more experience on range we've been shooting a hell of a i've been shooting a hell of a lot more but then on top of it cherry on top is that it wasn't baking in lava at 3 p.m. in the Texas afternoon that we finally got to this rifle. But alas, on the, what's, it's just call this the precursor M4, the XM4 era type of rifle, the 727, the Colt M16A2 carbine. Things that can confuse Josh very, very much in the competitor sphere. I mean, classic rifle. This is if not like, AR-15. If not AR-15, why AR-15 shaped? Well, it is technically an AR-15. There's just a caveat line underneath to it. <laughs> but I mean, like, the, the, the beautiful classic 90s silhouette of the XM4 slash 727 is right here. And for the actual nerds like me out there, yes, we will talk about the difference between the AR-15A2 carbine 727XM4 and then subsequently to the M4 because that is, that's the point of this. We're going to talk about the lineage, what led to the M4 and some of the important hit points to it. But Josh, all the way out, 55 grain ammunition, iron sights, hyper lightweight system. I've heard it many a times, the base things that you need on a rifle is what? A sling? Uh a light and a decent sighting system. Those are like the baseline things, right? I like that modification of optic to a decent sighting system. A decent sighting system because the M16 A2 sights- You thought you'd sneak in by, the M16 A2 sights are for professionals, my friend. But (laughs) I digress. I know there's gonna be like Delta boys out there that are like seething right now that I say the M16 A2 sights are professionals. Um, But So, Henry, there's a number of things that we just talked through. Let's hit the rationale as to why we see ourselves settling on the 14.5, why the team settled on the 14.5 back at the time. Yeah, so a lot of people contribute the uh, development of the 14.5 to Delta. Uh, Delta, they were operating in a lot of different environments. Um, It was either really cold, really hot, whatever. And reliability was the paramount item for them. You could have a really nice shorty, but then at the same time, if it wouldn't operate in the Tundra with the carbine linked gas system, then it's not viable. But then on vice versa, if you had to overgas it for to work in the Tundra and you brought it back to 
a normal Texas environment and it was just slamming slamming the system like crazy just to get that reliability that also wouldn't work well so 14.5 outs after a lot of work that delta had had done was really that really nice balance for a carbine length gas system and the carbine length collapsible stock and, and buffer system 14.5 gave the operators a good ballistic advantage uh, over 12.5 whether it's velocity terminal uh, terminal velocity on target, it also provided enough dwell time, which is the projectile still traveling through the barrel and pushing the gas into the system towards the uh, um, the internal piston to operate and give it enough bolt speed. So it was gassing correctly in a lot of varied hot and cold different climates. Uh, but it also gave it a the fourteen five barrel also gave it a very um, a, a very usable recoil pattern versus something that was, let's say, like a 16-inch barrel. Really, the 16-inch barrel is its a very civilian thing just to defeat the NFA. It's like right above the 16-inch requirement. So it, to a different extent, 13.9 is also there to use a pin and welded flash hider long enough to defeat that 16 inch but 14.5 specifically is developed to be in that sweet spot something that guaranteed good reliability decent velocity on target and a recoil operating system that an operator could de could use uh, proficiently uh, up close as well as you know the distance targets mm -hmm. so in summary reliability recoil performance and general terminal ballistics or, or, or projectile velocity. That combination of three things leads you to a very effective rifle at 14.5 carbine length. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, we sort of like led to a lot of things just on the core operating system, but the M16, the AR-15 system itself also had more to bring to the table. As you know, as a lover of accessories, the AR-15 without anything on it is exceedingly light. Mm -hmm. But they also looked at it from a perspective of how do we give ourselves more capability? And a lighter system that had decent performance with a lot of real estate also turned into that base canvas for them to also develop the peripheral items that later on turned into requirements for the SOP mod uh, one and SOP mod two packets. Mm -hmm. um, yep. And so the block, the block one and block two uh, uh, requirements. And so when I look at something like this, Josh, this is really cool because you can see the ideas and the, the experience that has been poured into using specifically a 14.5, the carbine length, and then looking at, um, and I'll talk about this in a little bit, you know, how they tried to adopt a um, more attachment points to the M4. You can see this one's using a surefire, but that was the beginning of the age of the modern gunfighting doctrines that, that we know and we start thinking about. It's not just the, the weapon, it's a weapon system. How do you add capabilities to the weapon itself? So... If you look at this, let's look at Mogadishu, right? This looks like it could have been one of the rifles that was at Mogadishu because their M16A2 carbines that uh, Delta was using, in fact, had 14.5 barrels. Some of them were skinny barrels. Some of them were M4 profile barrels. But Delta, on the other hand, was using the latest M16 that the military had procured. Uh, no, 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 no. You flipped it. Oh, Rangers. Sorry, the, the I meant Rangers. Rangers. The Rangers, Rangers yeah, were yeah, yeah. using... The M16A2 is the latest, sorry, thanks for catching yeah. me there. The latest <laughs> rifle that the military had procured. And so that's a huge divergence of where you're going. The M16A2, while it's one of my favorites, I love the rifle itself. When you're talking about mobile operations, you know, um, heavy, like mechanized operations, helo insertions and stuff like that, you would be insane to take an M16A2 over a carbine, especially if you're talking about a three, 400 meter effective engagement distance, which the practical accuracy course really heavily highlights that engagement distance. 
the carbine does everything that the M16A2 can do on a baseline, but it gives you more. It's shorter. You have with a oh. in terms of Delta, they were putting more stuff on there to give them more capability. Now that I, comment is going to draw some fire. <laughs> what, what what did I say? That the Car 50 or this the M16A2 carbine is doing everything the M16 can do, ah, which is better. I see. That's going to draw I some see. fire. <laughs> In the mindset of Delta, that's that's what they were thinking, though. You know, because they had they needed these to fulfill more capability than than the M16A2 could, or rather, the M16A2 did achieve a lot of those things, but it was really long, and that was a hindrance to a lot of their operations. So, um, I, okay, we've been going on this for a while. I think one of the big stipulations, one of the big questions that we had from the very beginning, what's the difference between a CAR-15, a 727, an XM4, and an M4, right? Mm -hmm. These are obviously questions that do not keep Josh up at night, but do for me. A <laughs> uh, <laughs> couple things we need to delineate here. The M16 or the CAR 15 is just a carbine AR 15. So a CAR 15 could be referenced to like a 12.5 barrel, which would be this long, 10.5, or it could be a 14.5. All of those are AR 15 carbines. CAR 15. 727 specifically is a 14.5 barrel with an A2 sight. Now, the CAR 15s that Delta had, um, a lot of them were C7 uppers. But some of them were also A2s. It depends on the era that they bought those. Again, those are COTS rifles, so commercial off the shelf. I mean, this is Delta. They don't have to, I mean, they, they didn't exist in the typical supply system, so they would buy directly off of um, Colt. And those rifles were not entirely standardized because remember this era of Colt, they were kind of transitioning between A1 and A2, so like skinny barrels, M4 profile barrels, or whatever. But Back in 83, the Marine Corps um, set out to develop a CAR-15 that they wanted, and that would have been the XM-4, the Experimental Model 4. So usually for U.S. military designations, like if you have like an M-4, the Experimental Model that you need to play with before that would be the XM, similar to the XM-177 submachine gun, I might add. It was classified as a sub machine gun ladies and gentlemen um so the xm4 was similar to this and and i would almost say that this almost duplicates what an xm4 is with the difference that the xm4 had the later wide m4 style handguards that you would see and also the barrel wasn't a typical m4 profile barrel you can see right here you can see kind of like the m4 profile barrel it it thins down right here for the grenade notch so you can put an m203 right here and it thicks back thickens back out right here on the xm4 this profile is actually like a skinny barrel and so it was that era when the marine corps were also experimenting with barrel profile and seeing you know what what do we want and so the xm4 had a little bit thicker front end and i know some people would talk about the m16a2's barrel profile being thicker on the front and not underneath the hang guards. That's beside the point. The XM4 is similar to this uh, in a sense that the only differences, major differences, are the barrel profile and the handguard right here. Otherwise, it also uses the A2 carry handle top. Now, okay, so then there's a bridge between this and the M4, however. And a good part of that bridge actually came from Delta, uh, once again. Delta was experimenting with stuff. You remember in Black Hawk Down, you'd see Delta running around. They had the carry handles with an, uh, the aim point mounted on top of the carry handle. Mm -hmm. Now, the funny thing is how, uh, how history is. Nowadays, people like that. They like the heads up firing up close. Uh, but back in the day, Delta was trying to still get a decent cheek weld. So what they did, they started cutting off these carry handles and bolting on a weaver rail on top of this and from there they would direct mount like a red dot onto it and of course josh you know what that turns into it's the basis of the the uh, the flat top upper and this is going to make you and i feel a little bit old 
But you remember when we started shooting, the flat top upper was not a standard item for people to to, to purchase. Like, yeah, a lot of people would buy a an AR-15 and it would be a carry handle upper back then. Like, you had to pay extra for a flat top upper. And it was that that mod that the Delta guys were doing that later on turned into the M4 using a flat top upper. And from there, the M16 A4 would adopt the flat top upper and go from the A2 with a carry handle to an A4 with a flat top upper. So um, the M4 at that point had the thick handguards, the M4 14.5 profile barrel that we know and love, the flat top upper, and early M4s had the CAR-15 stocks and later on turned into the waffle stocks that we currently know as well. And so when you look at something like this, even though for us it looks somewhat ancient, the XM4 type rifles embody a lot of those really neat development, th that development process that embodies the experience being interjected into these rifles um, from whether it's like SOCOM or people who are actually giving feedback to uh, the, the main weapon system developers. And um, it seems like we've forgotten about all of that when we developed the XM7. Just couldn't miss the opportunity to trash the XM7, huh? I hate it. I hate it. I, I cannot help myself, but I hate it. But anyways, I digress. That is for a different discussion. So, so what you're telling me, though, Henry, is that the XM4 is not at all the XM4 from COD. All right, so I forget which for the XM4 from Call of Duty. Um, gamers out there will know the XM4 as a different weapon system. For weapons nerds who don't game, you may be surprised to learn that the XM4 exists in Call of Duty in a different form. Yeah, great for you uh, developers for putting the XM4 into the game, but why? Do you make something with a short barrel and a flat top that goes against everything along the XM4's development? You put a 12.5 barrel, which is like exactly what you don't want. That's, that's what they were stepping away from. And then you put something that doesn't exist yet. And it's not just like, it's not the Weaver flat top. No, 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 no. They put the pick rail flat top up there that hasn't even been developed and won't be developed for a long while. And then the, the, the cherry on the cake, the coup de gras of this grand project from Who our... puts cherries on cake, Henry? Cherries on ice cream. Let me, let me, mm. They took the sling and wrapped it around the whole thing, like all over. No, 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 no. We don't use our slings in combat, according to Call of Duty, no. We use it to wrap around the rifle, and it's not even a carry handle. It just wraps there. I don't know how they how it stays on, wrapped on there, but it just wraps there, and that is the. It's XM4. also unclipped. It's also unclipped. It's not even clipped on. Yep. Just, yep. It's just like <laughs> wrapped around the rifle, just chilling right there. Nice. I don't nice. know how you're gonna actually use it, but that is the XM4 according to Call of Duty, and uh, our friend Clayco had cloned one. Um, Clone the Call of Duty one. The Call of Duty one, not the XM4, but the Call of Duty XM4. And Jesus, like, why? Just why? Why would you do something like that? Like, like, gentlemen, if you don't know how to go on Wikipedia or use this thing called Google, um, feel free to send us an email. Well, if that's the case, you can't send us emails. Just tag us on Instagram. That's probably your speed if you don't know how to research those things or read. And we will help you develop the current the the proper model for a baseline xm4 like why would you do something like that now for clarity henry you, you direct that at those who are developing this in the game not at clayco and his copy of the m4 no from the game. no clayco i love him very much and sometimes he copies <laughs> things that are um out of this world that hurt bit. you they hurt your soul they do hurt my soul they hurt quite a bit yeah. yes like of all the ars like i love that he clones like the bank heist ars i like that he does his like his nine mils like whatever 
this retro stuff is great, but that is not retro. That is like, that's like some kids when you tell them to draw an AR-15 and they draw it on their kindergarten drawing book and show you that this is what a rifle looks like. Although, that <laughs> I should digress. That's like kids when you ask them to draw what an elephant looks like and they draw something that looks more like a pig. Um, <laughs> that's what our friends at uh, Call of Duty have done to the beloved XM4. And I hate it. I hate it. Well, now that you all know where Henry stands on um, on all of this, um, I'm just here to remind you to like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and check us out over on 9H Podcasts and on Patreon. Until next time, we'll, we'll see you on the range. Yep, and if you develop Call of Duty, you can go...